called the night markets, and we call them Pasar Malam. And the night markets is like an open uh, market on, like like a flea market. But instead, they sell vegetables, fruits, uh, beef, chicken, uh, seafood. So um, for those who don't wake up early to go to the market, they can choose to go to the afternoon market. Uh, those who are working, mothers, they also can choose to go to the night market. Now this particular young lady is a story, okay? And she, she chose um, one, sun, uh, one evening to go to the Pasar Malam, which is the night market. As she drove down the road, you know, and then um, she had bought everything she needed. Um, she was going home to prepare dinner for her children. But she was very unhappy because the lady uh, who runs a stall uh, selling vegetables told her this. You look like the lady selling soya bean drink. So she was very insulted. How can I look like the lady selling soya bean drink? Okay, the Asian people love to drink soya bean. So she, she went home very unhappy, but that night as she prepared her, the dinner for her children, she was tired. She fed the children, bathed the children, put them in the room, and uh, they were ready to read the story. So that night was her husband's turn to read the story to the children. And she went out to clean up whatever left in the kitchen. But when she returned, as usual, the father had fallen asleep with four tired kids. And this was one of those days that she will have to either change the story to make a different ending or she would, you know, reread the story and end the story so that the children will fall asleep. So as she was doing that, she was wondering if fathers around the world are the same. When they read story to their children, they fall asleep before them. You have any similar experience? Well, for this girl, Monica, she, that night, she was very grateful for her children, but she was not very happy. She went out to the living room. There was a pile of laundry waiting for her. So but instead of going to the laundry, she went over to another pile. It was a pile of magazine. She sat down and she started searching through the pile of magazine. She was looking, looking for her identity, looking for her image. Yes, real images. Image of her in the cover. Monica, the cover girl. She was once the model for the Gucci bag for Maybelline, for Max Factor, for Shiseido, and even for Tiffany Diamonds. She was the cover girl. But how could that have happened? How could that have happened that she now looked like a woman who sells soya bean drinks on the street? That night, she thought about the flesh, the flashes, the flashes and the multiple cameramen would gather around her and take her picture those years ago. And then she remembered those lights in the hospital bed or in the labor room. And then she remembered the feeling she felt when she held the tiny hand of her firstborn child her little baby daughter. She held to those hands so tight, she couldn't let go of her baby. But she made a decision to let her glamorous career go. She let go of the cover girl, Monica, and she decided to stay with her children that came after. But that night, 
she wanted, she wanted herself back. She wanted to be Monica the cover girl again. And so the next day, she decided that she would go back to the Pasamanam and show that vegetable seller who she really was. Next day, she dressed herself up with nicer clothes than what she wore the day before. She put on makeup, she sprayed some perfume, and then she drove off to the Pasamanam. Now let me tell you, there's something that you cannot see in the picture or you, because you simply cannot transfer that by sight because it is smell. Okay, when you have meat, beef, chicken, fish, vegetables, all in the market, it doesn't really smell good. But Monica, dressed in her best with makeup and perfume, she walked straight towards the vegetable seller and she said, she was going to say, I am Monica the cover girl. But then, the lady who was selling vegetables said, hey, today you don't have to sell soya bean? Mm -hmm. Are you going for a wedding dinner? She was flabbergasted, Monica, how can she not recognize me? So, she swam that she will never ever go back to that vegetable seller again. And she walked out. But halfway she decided, no, I need to find out who is that, that, is that soya bean seller. So she walked across the aisle. There were stalls on the side with beef and chicken and fish and, and we call sotong. Sotong is a cuttlefish or squid. And all kinds of sm smelly food. She walked across, and then she came to a point where she could see the soya bean seller or the soya bean milk seller in the distance. And she stopped and she observed. Wow. She was not very well dressed, but her hair was pulled back nicely into a bun in the back, and her eyebrows were trimmed, her lips were very red because it was contrasted with soya bean like ivory colored face. She had a healthy pink in her cheek. <sighs> Monica felt so much better. She does look like me. She does. Uh, so, not so bad. The soya bean seller was a natural beauty. And that kind of comforted her a little bit. And then she watched. Behind her, there was a tiny table. And on the, at the table were two uh, children, a boy and a girl. They seemed to be doing homework at the small table. And Monica realized that every woman, or many women like her, are mothers. They do what they can for their children. She felt better, and she decided to go back and buy vegetables from the vegetable lady who said that she was like the soya bean seller. So this little story I share with women around the world who give up a lot, give up themselves in sacrifice for their marriage, for their family. And I know that Sue is capable of doing that because <laughs> she, her blood is the same as mine. And I know that Jay will be a very good husband. I have that confidence. And I want to thank all the mothers in this room who sacrifice for the family. And tomorrow is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all. Thank you. Thank you.